Okay, we're going to create an HMI file for the next gen HMI, and we're going to upload it through the SD, the micro SD card, to the uh, to the HMI screen. So let's start from the beginning, and all I'm going to do on this is create a a, a screen that I can write numbers to just as a display. I'm not going to try to use it as a touch screen right now. So what I'll do is first of all create a new a new file. I'm going to call it M M A O three. You can see a couple of others that I've made that um, kind of worked but not too great. So we'll do number three. Okay. I have to select the type of screen. I have the basic type which the smallest one, which is this uh, 2.4 inch screen. It's going to be a horizontal orientation there. Okay, so this is the screen right here. First thing I notice, uh, I don't like that white background. It's too bright. So over here, we've got different screen attributes. And one of them is uh, the color. So I'm going to select a black. So it's like a solid black screen. If I wanted like a different color, you know, it's like whatever, whatever I want, I could probably make it like a light blue or dark blue. Uh, didn't didn't select it for some reason. Well, that's odd. As soon as I say something. Let's try that. Okay, I don't know. I was clicking the wrong button. Let's try one more time. Now I need to know what I did wrong. So, um, oh, I had it turned off on the brightness. That's my mistake. So let's say I want like an ugly green color here. Um, lime green. There we go. So we're going to do a lime green screen on this. So that just sets the background color. Now I'm going to pull in a number. Okay. So I've got a couple of things on the screen. One is uh, milliamps and one is percent. I think on the percent, we're looking at like whole numbers. No, no, they have a decimal point. So let me get rid of this. I'm gonna use what's known as a float. So I'm gonna have two floats on there. Okay, so X zero can be the, uh, the milliamps and X one can be the percentage okay and so <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll use the tools and create a font a uh, 72 point font and I, I like the um, Arial Arial font I'm going to name that Arial 72 And you can see I've got a few other ones that I made along the way, so I guess I could reuse those if I wanted to. But and I'm going to add that to the project. Okay, so now you can see the font here that's available for me to put into this right here. So the so there is there it is right there. So uh, on this first one, this is going to be the milliamps. 0 to 20.0 so there's a trick to this the trick is you have to set it up to where well, first of all I don't like those colors let's change the background color to that green and we'll change the text color to something else like like uh, let's make it really ugly like a yellow there so x1 will be the, the green and yellow okay so on this um this is milliamps i need a little more a couple more digits there so there's a, a tool right here called right let me change that to a one okay so i don't know why they call it point right i guess two places to the right i, I don't know but uh That'll hold 20.0. On this one, point, point right. Let me find that one. 
Right, I'm probably going to need three placers on that one. I'm probably going to need either three or four, I don't know. Uh, it, the low end on this is minus 25, and the high end is 100, 100. So something I also noticed here is like the left, I want to left justify that, and I want to left justify this one. So let's just see how that looks. So I'm going to shrink that a little bit. I'm not sure about the negative sign, but you know we'll figure it out as we go. So, so I feel pretty comfortable with that. I'm going to add some text, and this first text box is going to say, "Let's get my colors right first: uh, green on the back and that yellow." Well, let's make it a different color. Let's make it like a a bright red okay and the text itself is going to say MA milliamps okay I'll try to shrink that a little bit I'm trying to prevent overlapping of the objects because they kind of block each other out and I noticed that's not lined up too good so that looks better so I'm going to do a control C and control V and just paste that so I can cut a little time out there. And this one is going to read percent. So I could just use the percent character, I guess. And let's shrink that a little bit. Okay, so that looks great. So what I'm going to do is save that. And then I'm going to go to... Now I've got my micro SD card plugged in. It's on a USB drive. So I'm going to do a TFT file output. I guess it's drive E. I'm going to say output. So I need to get rid of that other one because I don't think you can select files when I plug it into the into the screen. It looks for any file, so it's going to pick up that file. Okay. So one thing I can do before I do do that, if I go to debug. Right here, I can say x0.val equals 10, just to see how it works. So the trick is that uh, 4 milliamps, you have to send it a value of 40, because it will just, you see what it does, it just puts the decimal point where it should be. So for example, 4 milliamps is a 40. So it's, it's kind of a trick. I kind of wish I could hide that leading zero, but there may be a setting for that, I don't know. So 20 milliamps is a 200, so you get the idea. So x1.val, let's try the uh, minus 25. Uh, see, I need another digit right there. Uh, let's try 100. Oh, it'll be a thousand actually. Yeah, I need another digit, another decimal place. So let's let's close that off. That didn't work exactly right. So I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to go with four. Okay, and then I need a little more space. And let's go back to debug. And let's let's try x1 dot val equals minus 2500 uh, that's too much minus 250 mm, something else went wrong so let's go back and uh, right here not that one I think I need two places to the left, so let's debug that. If something's not right, x1.val equals um, minus 250. Mm. Two fifty. Something's just not right. Let's go back one more time. Ah, I don't think I want that two there. Let's try one. And let's go back one more time. Wow, 
all those leading zeros. I've got too many zeros now, so uh, let's get rid of one of those. I feel like I'm going in a little circles here, but let's try one more time. Um, x1 dot val equals minus 2250. That's minus 25 percent. Uh, let's do a 1000. Yeah. So it, I just have to multiply the percent by 10 and send that number over and I'll get the it'll look right anyway. And the same on milliamps just times 10. So let's let's shrink this back down. And let's move this up there. And I want to check it one more time. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. So let's close that off. I'm going to save that. And we're going to create a, a new TFT because it's different now. And there it is. Okay, so I feel I feel like that should work. Well, I'll send x x zero dot val equals, and back in the Arduino, I'm going to multiply it by a ten to scale it up to uh, to get the display to look right. And uh, the program that I have in the Arduino right now is not exactly right for this project, so I'm going to adjust it just a little bit so where I can get some numbers to pop up and just see how it looks. So let me uh, let me create a new a video for that and I'll add it to this one. Okay let's look at the software, the Arduino code. So I've got a variable called x which is a counter. I've got a boolean called one shot. One shot what that does is every time the the pulse from a external clock comes in it uh, changes the the count right. I've got a couple of variables, milliamps and percent. And I have to use integer values because the way the screen formats the number, it has to be an integer. So I open uh, serial port three to talk to the screen. Five is an input. Wait two and a half seconds. Um, if the input is on and I haven't counted yet, I'm going to go ahead and count. If it's over 100, I'm going to go back to zero. If the um, clock signal is off, I'm going to reset the one shot. So what that does is every time the external clock pulse turns on, I get a, a count. So I, it's a counter. Here I'm going to map the, uh, the count to zero to 200, which is 20. Percent zero to, I mean, minus 25 to 100. So I don't want to do the math. I'm going to let the map do it for me. Uh, here's the trick. You print. Sorry about that. Let me try to get it to focus here. You print the x0.val to tell it what you're going to update. Then you update it. Then you print three um, hex, hex numbers. 0x ff one after the other and that that signals to the screen to go ahead and update the screen so x0 x1 and that's it okay so i've already transferred that to the arduino so let's let's look at how we actually update the uh, the file itself okay so here is the uh, the, the micro sd i saved the ma03 file to it it's turned off right now the screen is off so I'm going to, um, to insert that into the screen. I'm going to reapply power to the screen. And the screen will find the card and up, upload the file from it. Successful. So I'm going to turn it off, pop the card out. I can leave it hanging out. I've only got one hand. I'll turn it back on, and there it is. So let's reboot the Arduino. We're going to start at zero milliamps, minus 25%. And we're going to let it creep upwards there. It's about one second per count, so it's going to take a, a few seconds to get there. What's important, though, is the zero and minus 25. And um, let's just let it run. So it's counting up from zero to 100. 100 should give me... Um, 20 
and 100%. So let's just let it run for a second or two. It would be nice. I should print out the, the count as well at the bottom just, just for fun. I can also add like a bar graph to show the milliamps on the side. I'll do another video for that. But it's neat to see it actually run. And uh, as soon as I power it up, it just starts running. So I'm trying to kill time while it counts. Uh, I feel like it's going to make it in the program when I hit 100%. Actually, when I hit 101, I go back to zero. So it's going to roll from 20.00 back to zero milliamps. And we're getting there. So the cool thing about this is that through the Arduino code, I could change a lot of things like the colors. I could change a lot of stuff by sending it text commands. Uh, there we go. So it rolled over. So if I don't like those colors or if I want the background to turn red at a certain point, I could change the background color of the screen just by changing the number on that of the color. So this is really basic, but it's great to see it work. I do want to get rid of those leading zeros if I can. I'm going to work on that and try another video.